Hi, I'm Bob Slayer, multi-minor award-winning comedian. Here are some facts. Jimbo and Gary are best mate. Fact. They travel around Australia doing comedy gig. Fact. But not everybody loves Jimbo and Gary. Let our friends at Channel 7 explain more. But in August last year, Gary's appetite landed him in trouble with the law after he was caught eating plants at Circular Quay. Three coppers versus a goat. It's hardly fair, is it? They also sent him a fine for $440 for unlawful destruction of vegetation. Jimbo posted the story online and it went viral. Half a million people saw it. And I went on tour with Jimbo and Gary before they got arrested for their heinous crime of eating grass. And here is our Outback adventure. Oh yeah, welcome to the tour. <laughs> There's a fucking goat! There's a fucking goat in this car. Bob, Jimbo <laughs> and Gary the goat. <laughs> Day one. Oh yeah. Having respectfully declined to continue my participation, in the Perth World Fringe Festival. My mate Jimbo offered to show me the real Australia. He picked me up at Adelaide Airport and we drove through the night. He didn't stop talking about his best mate, Gary. Come up to the checkpoint because of quarantine into Western Australia, it's a bit stricter. And the guy's going, mate, you can't bring a goat in. I said, mate, it's my pet, he's my mate. He goes, mate, you can't bring him in. And so I tied him up for a bit while I tried to work out what was going on. I could hear him crying. And I remember just thinking, fuck. Surely I can get around this quarantine point. But we just waited until it was dark and then we just went for a big bush walk about five kilometres out and I tied him up to a tree and then I walked back and drove through and then um, got him in the car and it felt like we like Thelma and Louise. We're on the run, aren't we, Gary? That's a beautiful story. You love this goat, do you? I do. What I like about him, he's, he's chill. He eats how I would love to eat. He sleeps anywhere and he's a good root. Whoa. No, at this point I would just like to say Jimbo's relationship with Gary is purely platonic. Shame on you. Well, here we are, uh, driven all the night at 7 o'clock, and we're, um, I reckon this is the outback. We're going to let Gary up for a piece. Bob, you're in control. All right. Don't uh, go off the road and hit any trees. Next stop, Cooper PD. Just wake me up if you're about to crash. All right. Bob's driven less than a kilometre and he's mowed a roo down. I'm a roo murderer. If you see it on the road, basically hold your line. Because they reckon most accidents happen from swerving. This is also true for anything they reckon in life. So when someone bans us for anything, just fucking mow the cunt down. <laughs> I can just do what I want and, and he's, he just does not complain. And I play Bob Seegers against the wind 500 times probably before you came here. And, and Gary did not change, complain once about my music choice. And most people would have probably chipped in after the first one and a half times. Basically asked the public in Ken tonight, we do a gig tomorrow in the front bar. He said, yeah, beauty. Met a guy on the radio in the bar who said he'd give us an interview tomorrow. We're going to put the posters up. Gary, don't go there. It's a great restaurant. Could be eaten. Australia with my goat and we've landed here at Cooper Peak and Ken down at the pub said we can do a gig at tonight. Tonight, yes, yeah, so you come down, come on down um pub tonight. He's the voice. The voice of Cooper PD. Okay, we more music on. Um gonna have a um, bit life. There's an emergency with the goat. Gotta find the goat. Yeah, you're not meant to come within 50 metres of the school, okay? Cooper is the opal mining capital of the world. Opal was first found there in 1915, and it's still dug out of the ground by prospectors, digging holes on their own bit of land and then living in the holes. Out of 3,000 people, half of them live underground. In fact, the name Cooper means white man down a hole. 
Basically, it's a dusty town with leathery men looking for pretty rocks. So now you've just left him outside. He's not whined at the door like a dog would. No. So he's just gone off, chewed a bush, done a shit, which nobody's going to moan about because it's nicer, or veggie pellet, and he'll be happy. Yeah, and I'll just give him a whistle in the morning and he'll come. That's if someone hasn't knocked on the door and said, can you get your fucking goat off my brand new car? You know, we met a guy today, mm. Opal Vic. <laughs> Somebody like that's going to see a goat with no collar on. Oh, it is an issue. And I did have a collar around saying, hi, I'm Gary, please donate me. <laughs> like, if I start just doing all this stuff, he's not going to be the free goat he is. It's more important that he lives this full life. Live it full while he's here, and if somebody has him in a, in a goat burger, like, there's plenty more goats in the sea. Well, I'd be a bit upset. <laughs> <laughs> you love your goat. Going, mate. Now, a lot of people think, oh, you know, I'm using my goat, but we are business partners, you know. He's my best publicist I've ever had, you know, in terms of getting people to show. And Gary, I just want to pay him. See, he doesn't want money. He says, nah, Jimbo, I don't want it. I, I love being on tour with you. He does like tomatoes. He's a very naughty goat. Well, you Well, I keep telling him this. Don't, you know, just because I tell me, don't think I'm responsible. <laughs> This is the thing about Gary, like he's all cute until uh, you stay in one place for too long. So he's two cappuccino, I'll get it for you guys. Have you apologised Gary? Uh, after you don't want it, bring it here, we'll cook it. <laughs> <laughs> You've just got an offer there. Rock and roll's all about trashing TVs and Gary's just getting right in there. It's Ozzy Osbourne, he might have thrown a TV out a window but he hasn't made one. Gary, not my mat mate, not my mat. <laughs> <laughs> You need a better secretary. <laughs> That's the office that's closed for the day, is it? Anyone uh, uh, from the paper here? We need press. Yeah, right. Oh, what are they? Oh, fuck. Well, you ripped it, come off. <laughs> the gig went well. We took enough money to have a few pints and get us to the next town. But when I first turned up in Cooper PD, I really thought, what a dusty shithole. But 48 hours later, I fell in love with the place. And the only issue they had with Gary was should they fry him, should they grill him, or should they spit roast him. The next day, we drove 450 kilometers to Roxby Downs, a very different sort of mining town. Whereas Cooper PD represents a typical laid-back Australia, Roxby Downs is a modern Australia, industrial and commercial. It's an outback oasis in the desert. Four and a half thousand people. We're not affected by the uranium mining at all. It doesn't, doesn't do anything to us. <laughs> Roxby Downs was built in the mid-80s to house the workforce of BHP Billiton, who pulled gold, silver, uranium out of the ground on an industrial scale. We spend our first night sleeping rough on the football oval. Straight away, we're in trouble. We've got room service, Jimbo. They brought us breakfast. <laughs> nah, not quite. Have you come to say that it's checkout time? Yeah, mate. Bottom line is, we'll move on, hey? That goat just had a shit, mate. Right. <laughs> shit in your trousers. <laughs> he always seems very happy travelling on your shoulder. Hey, guys, we're doing a comedy show at the pub tonight. 8.30, come down. And all we need is like 12 hours of people talking about who the fuck are these two homeless <laughs> pounce with a goat? Who are you giving us money? Just to get the fuck out of our town. Well, that's a bit weird you filming in a toilet. <laughs> we tied Gary up over there. And all the staff like it. But a uh, lady came in and said, look, I don't think you should allow a goat in here. Kick up a big stick. Yeah, anyway, Gary's been kicked out. They've got to get over it. It's just a goat. After getting kicked out of the football oval and then the swimming pool, we went for breakfast. And Gary's love of grass was introducing us to more new friends. Okay, who owns your you own? Mate. Mate. Just not on the lawn. Put it on that lawn for Christ's sake. Don't Jeez. put a goat on a lawn. And we've got the school and the kids. Yeah, I've just got the place. Kids love it. Yeah, it up, but... it's a... They may, but I've just been sent over. They would don't be, see goats in this to, the, to stop, stop the kids coming out, would it be best if we take a goat into the school? We do kids shows, do it. It's a lovely thought, but we need to pre-arrange those things. We can't do it in the school. Oh, right. so and you probably do police check. We do all oh, sorts of things like that. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's parking at the back 
Club, and also That's not We kept getting blamed for this rusty caravan. They seemed to assume there was a direct correlation between poor parking and goat ownership. A lot of people in the town are linking us with the van, the rusty van over there. Are you surprised? No. <laughs> you can cheeky. You, can, you, can you just put this on record yes. that it's not our van, but if we had enough money to own that van, we'd be we proud would. of it. <laughs> and Gary, our head of PR, had more media lining up outside starting with the Roxby Sun. Our show is a bit like Gary, you know. Some people are into it, love it, and other people get a bit uptight. But we just say, look, all it is is a bit of burning pubes on stage, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, you do smell it for a few minutes, but it's a memory you'll probably take to your deathbed. We're giving you some great stuff, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I can't use it anymore. <laughs> then, Julian at the radio station. I'm the manager of 105.5 Rocks FM, local live and loving it. He's not. chewing on your knee right now. No, that's not my knee. <laughs> <laughs> you just pointed out one of the reasons I love him. You know? <laughs> I heard that there was a goat running loose and that it upset everyone in the leisure centre by yep. getting into the pool. All up, I think Gary has caused a lot of chaos, but I think he's brought more joy than pain to this town. <laughs> and I'd like to just add that he's only a goat. Have you got the note? Do we want to read the note no, out? No, no. <laughs> just leave all of that alone. <laughs> This morning at 8.15, a pool patron was allowed to enter the pool grounds with a goat <laughs> while he went for a swim. Oh. This, matter, this matter is of great concern to me <laughs> for hygienic reasons. It should have been stopped at the kiosk. Julian got worried there, quite rightly. Well done. That's right, thank you. Um, You're not sleeping with her, are you, Julian? <laughs> no, 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 right, sorry, no, sorry, no, yeah. time out. As Gary waited patiently outside, prosecutors told the court Jimbo's $440 fine was justified because he allowed his pet to damage the plants. But the magistrate threw the case out, saying the person has no control over what it is the goat might eat. He might have preferred an ice cream. No, he doesn't. He probably prefers cigarette butts, and which is probably why he enjoys hanging outside court here. Jimbo's lawyers say there's a serious side to it too. The police brief of evidence was hundreds of pages long, and they say a total waste of valuable police time. Jimbo and Gary now plan to resume their comedy gigs, starting their routine with the one about the goat that went to court. Jody Spears, 7 News. This is a story of a first teacher. Shed for me the jumpers and the devil me the features. Blew up her hands when my mum said her name. That's right.